we are going to create an organization chart in PowerPoint using its built-in smart art feature. Then we're going to build another version of that chart in a more powerful, fast, and easy to use way. Unlike all of the other examples on the internet for building an org chart in PowerPoint, we're going to use a meaningful number of employees. So many of the other tutorials just have five or six or 10 employees. We have a company with 50 employees, still small, but much more meaningful. All of this data is just demonstration data. None of it is real. You'll see that our employee list here, each employee has a manager, a city, a title, division, department, birthday, start date, and employee number. And we'd like some of this information to be in our chart along with the structure of the reporting relationships. So we're gonna do that natively in PowerPoint and then consider an alternative. So here we are in PowerPoint. The way to get started with an organizational chart is to start with a new slide. And I recommend blank, but you can choose any of these formats, but blank will give you the most real estate to work with. And that's what I have here, just a blank slide. Then we will insert smart art hierarchy and there are a number of hierarchy examples in here. We'll just choose the first one. And you'll see the PowerPoint gives you a few boxes and lines to start with. And that's great. We're gonna fill this out with our 50 employees. Now, when you get this smart art embedded, it will leave a lot of white space. And since we have so many employees, let's make this the full dimensions of the slide. I'm just gonna grab these two corners and now we're at full dimensions. And if you wanted a little more padding, you could make it a bit smaller so there would be top and bottom and side margins would probably be a good idea. But for our sake, we're gonna keep the real estate as large as possible. To bring in those employees quickly and easily, we could just click in the boxes here, but we're gonna use this left arrow key and PowerPoint will display the organizational chart in an outline format. The first thing I'm going to do is there's this traditional assistant reporting relationship box here, which is nice, but we're gonna remove it for our purposes uh, and just get back to a chart like this. Now, it's nice that PowerPoint rearranges the chart for us once we've removed that box to make best use of the real estate. So let's go to our data. We have Jonathan Clay here. Jonathan is the president and CEO, so we wanna bring him in uh, to our chart. So we're gonna come and expand and put him at the top. So there's Jonathan Clay at the top there. Now, we have these three boxes down below. And if you come back to our data, you'll see that these five people report directly to Jonathan Clay. So let's just copy all five of those. And we're gonna paste them in and then we'll delete this one and this one. And now we have those five people in our org chart. So the next group in our spreadsheet is Ashley Oliver's direct reports, and she has three of them. And so we're gonna grab these three, and we have to open this again. PowerPoint's gonna close this each time on you. And we're gonna come here, and we're just gonna hit enter, and we wanna tab in, because this is under Ashley's and we're going to paste those three people. And so now you'll see that PowerPoint has rearranged the chart. It's stacking these vertically so that it allows um, more room vertically rather than uh, horizontally, which is actually a benefit for us. And we'll come back to our data and we see that Chad has three reports. So we're gonna grab those three and reopen our box again. And we're now at another layer down inside of our organizational structure. So uh, we wanna come in here and we're gonna paste those three. And so now you'll see that Jonathan, uh, Ashley reports to Jonathan and Chad reports to Ashley and then these three people report to Chad. And so let's come in and take a look at Kenneth Matthews here and he has uh, several more reports. And we're gonna come back to our chart, reopen that again. And we're gonna come here and add one and then paste those in. And again, PowerPoint is automatically resizing the chart for us to account for all those names. And if we go back here, we have Nicole Wyatt has these direct reports. And we're back out a level there. And so we'll just add those to Nicole. And if we come back to our data, we'll see that David Wilkinson has 
these four reports. And then we see that Brandy Phillips, and we'll find out where Brandy is here in just a moment. Brandy reports to David, so we want to select Brandy and add a layer underneath her and add those three people. Now, I'm not skipping ahead here because part of the point I want to make is that this is pretty fast for doing it, but it is still quite manual. I'm having to copy and paste uh, these in here, and that's useful to keep in mind when I show you a faster, easier way to do this. And so finally, we have Gina under here. And we'll select Gina. And now, two more groups. Anna here has these direct reports. And there they are. And finally, Robert at the end has these. And there, PowerPoint has built our chart for us just by copying and pasting from this Excel data, we've been able to build this chart. Now there are a few things to note here. The first is the fixed dimension canvas is going to hamper what we can do with the design of our chart. But on the flip side, PowerPoint has helped us keep it within those bounds by adjusting the layout and the text sizing for us automatically. And maybe that text is a little too big for us. And so we can actually come here and we can uh, reduce it and make it a little bit easier to read. The most important thing is that there is no way to easily add additional information to these boxes as a group. So if I want to say that Ashley Oliver is the CFO, I have to manually come in here, enter a return, and type CFO, and then maybe change that label. I don't want it to be that big, but I now have to manage all of these individual labels and titles, and that can get quite tedious with the kinds of information that we have in this chart. So now that we've created an organizational chart in PowerPoint using the Smart Art feature, we want to explore an alternative that is faster and easier and brings in all that data in our employee list uh, that we want to bring display on the chart. So we're going to use a product called LexChart to create that organizational chart, and then we're going to bring the results into PowerPoint so we can still use PowerPoint to display that chart if we want to. I'm going to keep this chart in play, and we're going to come to this blank canvas. But before we add something here, we're going to import this management data into LexChart. Here we are in LexChart, and to grab that data, we're going to come to Import. And we can choose our file, and we have this management chart CSV, which is this file right here that we're working with over on the side. And we'll open that and upload it. And then LexChart is going to say, well, where should all this data and information go? The employee is the primary focus for us. And we have each employee has a manager. So because this is a hierarchy chart, we're going to tell LexChart which of these columns is the parent node and which is the child one. And in this case, the employee is the child relationship, not a family relationship, but simply in a hierarchy. So one comes before the other, and so the employee will be below the manager in our chart. So here's the parent. And so we're gonna add all of that there. And now, we don't really care about the city, but we do care about the title, and LexChart will ask, is this data about the parent or is this data about the child? In this case, it's the employee, so it's the child data, and we'll ignore the division and the department maybe, Let's add the start date to that child data, and we'll add the employee number. So what we've said is 
there's this hierarchy relationship between these two columns. And then for this column, the employees, we want you to add the title and the start date and the employee number. And we're just gonna say go. And so now we have a chart that at one level looks very much like uh, the PowerPoint one we built. Let's give it a name. And we can do some things in LexChart that we can't do in PowerPoint. So for example, I can zoom in here and go explore because LexChart is built on an infinite canvas, not a fixed size like PowerPoint. And we can always get back uh, to base this way. The other thing we might wanna do is change some of the formatting globally because you see that each of our cards here, each of the employees has their information in there, but maybe we want that to look a little bit different. And so what I'm going to do is simply select all of them and we're going to change the position to be vertical. So now we have the title of that information. So title, general counsel, start date employee appears above the data. And we can even make some more refined changes if we want. And I'm going to make the text of the label small and we'll make that data a little bit bigger. And we're gonna move the name to the left as well. And notice I've just changed all of the cards in one fell swoop with those changes. Now it's still black and white and our org chart in PowerPoint was solid blue boxes and maybe we like that approach. So we can do that very easily in LexChart. We're gonna again select all of them and we will fill them with blue and we will make the text white. And there we have those blue boxes. And we can also come in and say, select all the links and make those links blue as well. So now it's looking a lot more like our org chart in PowerPoint. Oh, I see I didn't make the border on those boxes blue as well. Let's do that. They were gray, now they're blue. So now we have an organizational chart with a lot more information on it uh, that we can view. And we can easily adjust the appearance of the entire chart. So I've made all the labels uh, vertically stacked, for example. Uh, we can come in here and make the name uh, even bigger if we wanted to. Let's say we make that large or even extra large and we get an effect where the names really jump out then in that case. So very easy to create this organizational chart from Excel. We just imported the data, assigned it to a location, and then spent the time formatting the chart the way we want. Now, in LexChart, there's a very handy feature called the viewer. And when you come to the viewer, you will get the same chart, but none of the options. This is gonna become very handy for us when we use this chart in PowerPoint. But what I wanna do right now is embed this chart in my PowerPoint presentation. So if I come to the download button, I have a number of options and I will choose the PNG format. It could be any of these, but we'll do PNG. And we're gonna go back to PowerPoint. Now in PowerPoint, if I wanna embed that chart, all I have to do is insert pictures from file, choose org chart, and there I have that org chart. And notice, unlike this one, this chart has all the data about those individuals. Now that we have the organization chart that we produced in LexChart embedded in PowerPoint, we wanna make sure that we can interact with it and use it in a way that's effective during the presentation with PowerPoint. When you embed an image, just like the original org chart into PowerPoint, it is still confined by the geographic boundaries of the slide. So if you have a larger chart with more data in it, it's still gonna be confined to those dimensions. But fortunately, PowerPoint has a feature that allows us to leverage the infinite canvas of LexChart where we can pan and zoom. So to take advantage of that, what we're gonna do is turn this image into a link to LexCharts viewer. So to do that, we're gonna select the image in PowerPoint, and you can either right click or select Command K, and we're going to insert a hyperlink on the whole image. 
Now we have to go get the URL link that we want. So let's go to LexChart. And we want to open our org chart in that viewer. So there are a couple ways to get there. So one is that you can just come to view and the viewer, or from the main charts page, if you simply click on the name, it'll take you to the viewer as well. And the viewer in LexChart also has all the zoom in, zoom out, drag around, explore the chart, however you need, and you can always get back to this full size view. So what we wanna do is cap, copy that entire URL, all of that there, come back to PowerPoint, embed it here, and say okay. And now, when we actually do the presentation in presentation mode, we're gonna be able to use this to go back and interact with the chart in LexChart seamlessly during our presentation. To illustrate the effect, I'm gonna move away from the viewer in LexChart temporarily. So we'll go to the main charts page and then back to PowerPoint. Now, let's imagine that we're about to start our presentation. So we come to slideshow and play from the current slide. So here is the LexChart slide that our audience is viewing and it might be too small for us, but notice as we move our mouse over, we can click and then our presentation will show the viewer and we can come in and take a look at Nicole's branch of the chart or slide over and explore all of David Wilkinson's. So no matter how big your chart is, you can embed it and interact with it in PowerPoint, either as an image or connect it to the viewer and then use the viewer live in a presentation to explore the nuances of your chart. So those are the two ways to embed an organizational chart in PowerPoint. One is to use the smart art capability that's built in. The other is to use LexChart to design a more powerful, flexible chart and embed that in your PowerPoint presentation. LexChart has the advantage of not being constrained by the slide dimensions, and it allows you to import a lot more data into your chart really easily. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Come back for more.